This week on Maker Update, an attractive clock, robots on the ceiling, Microbit gets an upgrade, a Cylon scooter, pocket model kits, a box of life, and OLED fangs. Hey, I'm Donald Bell. Welcome back to another Maker Update, the weekly show where I update you on makery things. I hope you're doing well. I'm feeling good. I got the fall vibes going on now officially around here. Change is in the air. Feels good. Uh, I got a fun show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. Check out this clock from Eric Wynn. It uses a combination of magnets and steel balls to create the numbers. Every minute, a pair of servos holding it up turns the clock face down into this tray where it can exchange the steel balls and update the time. It's very clever. It also makes a very satisfying kerchunk sound as the magnets engage. Behind the clock face, you'll find an Arduino Nano, a real-time clock module, and around 28 SG90 servos. Each servo horn is connected up to a single segment made of laser-cut wooden magnets. The servo pushes the segment forward when it wants to populate it with steel balls and then retracts it to clear it off. One tip I picked up from this project is how to make use of servo signal reversers. I'd never heard of them before, but they seem to be common in RC projects. It's just a bit of hardware wired in line with the servo that turns out the opposite way it's instructed. Eric's using one here for the hefty hinge servos on each side. This way he can mirror the orientation of how they're mounted and they can both be wired up to the same servo output without working against each other. I also just have to mention Eric's choice of materials here. A lot of this is laser cut sheets of plywood with a walnut veneer already on the face, but the clock face is actually laser cut acrylic with a walnut veneer glued onto it. It looks great and it's another trick I hope to use someday. Now for some news. Last week, Toyota Research Institute showed off their concept for a ceiling mounted domestic robot. They call it a gantry robot because it actually runs along a framework on the ceiling to access different parts of your home. The idea is that navigating floor space is such a complicated task for robots that putting them on the ceiling simplifies things and keeps the robot out of the way. Granted, you have to make sure it doesn't zoom by and decapitate you, but the demo here shows it going very, very slow. I mention it because I think it's a neat frontier for us to explore. Ceiling robotics. Maybe there's a ceiling mounted robot that could follow your pets around with a laser pointer for entertainment. There's possibilities up there. Also this week, the Microbit Foundation has announced a new version of their Microbit board. It's essentially the same form factor. They've added a microphone and a speaker and increased the speed of the processor. A power saving mode has been added so that you can power down your project without disconnecting it. As a small design improvement, they've notched the connection pads to make it easier for alligator clips to stay on. Otherwise, the design is all made to be as backwards compatible as possible. If you have a project that works on the first gen micro bit, it should work here too with no problem. Availability is expected in November with pricing probably about the same. Now for more projects, Becky Stern has a new guide on how she added these Knight Rider style animated LEDs to her boyfriend's scooter. It's the perfect 80s touch to an awesomely 80s scooter design. It actually turns out to be a much simpler project than I expected. Becky is using a five volt trinket board attached to a short strip of NeoPixels. For the code, she's using an existing Arduino sketch from Phil B. What surprised me is that she's actually powering the trinket directly from the scooter's 12 volt battery. Even though it's at the upper limit of what the trinket can handle, it turns out that the voltage regulator on the trinket can convert that down to the five volts needed for the board and the LEDs. Crazy! And it gets me thinking about what other kinds of lighting effect projects you can make for cars and scooters. On Thingiverse, Pito Skeeto, aka Nakozen, has been very busy uploading these tiny 3D printable model kits. Some are modeled after real planes and rocket ships, but there's also a lot of fun sci-fi ships here too. These are fun to make, quick to print, and a lot of them include an optional design with a loop built in to turn it into an ornament or something that you can hang from your ceiling robot. Emily Velasco posted a video for this Arduino powered Conway's Game of Life. It's using the Arduino TV out library to send out a composite video signal. If you love the look of old TVs but wonder what you could plug into them to make them useful, this is a cool way to go. You can find the code on GitHub. I have a link down in the show notes. If you're wondering how to mask up your kids or yourself for Halloween, check out this animated monster mask on the Build XYZ blog. This 3D printed design uses N95 replacement filters on the sides and an OLED display on the front. There's a microphone built in that animates the mouth as you talk. 
With the touch of a button, you can make the screen show a trick or treat sign. All of it runs off an Arduino Nano. It doesn't look super comfortable, but when was the last time you actually had a comfortable Halloween mask? As far as COVID safety goes, you're rolling the dice with any homemade solution, so proceed at your own risk. Now for a few tools and tips. On his YouTube channel, Jeremy Fielding answers a recurring question he gets. How do you pick the right motor for your project? In the video, he not only walks you through the formula for how to figure out the motor power needs of your project, but he also demonstrates what it really means to trade off speed for torque. It's a great video. If you're looking for an inexpensive and reliable pocket tripod for documenting your projects, check out this recommendation from Tyler Weingartner on the Cool Tools channel. The UltraPod comes in two sizes, and unlike a GorillaPod, it includes a strap to tightly secure it around things. I also recommend checking out this video by Zach Friedman on how he built this 3D printed video transport controller in a weekend. It's really a tips video disguised as a project video. Zach offers up some useful strategies for planning out any weekend project, designing for quick iterations, accepting the flaws, and hitting your deadline so that the project doesn't turn into a dusty box of someday I'll finish it. If you struggle to finish projects that you start, and we've all been there, Zach's tough love pep talk may be just what you need. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, I'm going to feature this video from Lady Ada on the Adafruit channel. She shows how she uses the DigiKey search to find just the right standoffs and spacers for her projects. In the process, she also offers some tips on how to measure for the standoffs you need using calipers and explains when you may want to go with the nylon option instead of metal. If you're ordering just a handful of these, the pricing on DigiKey may not blow you away, but as she explains, as soon as you're ordering a hundred or a thousand of these for kits or manufacturing, DigiKey's bulk pricing is going to be hard to beat. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, get on the Maker Update email list so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for being awesome and for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.